Thank you, Kelsey. That was beautiful. Love hearing those old songs like that. It just makes you remember and takes you back to a time in the past where it's like, huh, that's good stuff. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. Happy Sunday. Thankful for this liquid sunshine that we've got going on outside. All depends on your perspective, how you look at it. So, so thankful for the rain today. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Hello, those people in Zoom land. Glad you guys are able to, to join us today. Pastor Elizabeth, praying for you. Looking forward to a great message today. So just grateful. Speaking of prayer, thanks for your prayers for myself. Last Sunday at this time, I was completely in bed, fever, like the whole thing. So I'm thankful for prayers and for strength and for health to be able to be here today. So thank you for your love and your support in that way. And um, if you have prayer needs and you would like to fill out one of our prayer request cards in the back here in the, in the lobby, you can certainly do that. Um, and Pastor Elizabeth will pray over those for seven days, and then we'll send those to Missouri, which will be prayed over for 30 days. So um, thank you also for your prayers for our brother Mal. When I came in today, it was I miss seeing him and his blue eyes and his, he was from Maine, you know, and so the way that he was able to communicate in the way that he did, and uh, Mal, we're glad that you're still with us today in spirit, so we're grateful for that. That's good stuff. Um, we want to welcome our visitors. Do we have anybody visiting for the first time today? If you would, just raise your hand about this big. They're all on Zoom land. Very good. Well, it's very good to do that. Hey, just a few things to be reminded of this week. Tuesday at 530, our dear Linda is going to have light yoga here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. We'll have our Deeksha blessing going on, which will be a great thing. So looking forward to that. Um, next Sunday, I'm actually going to be in Salisbury. Um, I'm a reflexologist, so I've got some continuing education classes that I need to do, learning about hand reflexology and ear reflexology. So I'll be out, but the following week, which will be October 1st, um, Pastor Elizabeth is going to be up in Washington, D.C. with Shri Shri for his event there. I stand for peace, the peace rally that's going on in Washington. Um, so I'll be speaking here at Unity on the 1st. So looking forward to bringing you a good word. Um, hopefully it'll be a blessing for that. So those are just a few things to, to keep aware of. And Elizabeth, we'll certainly be praying for you as you go and that you're away. Um, we've got our opportunity to give later in the service today. And what I love about it is not only can you give physically with the bags that come along, but if you're a little more tech savvy, there's a little QR code on the back of the rows there that you can actually scan. That'll take you right to PayPal in case you didn't bring any monies. Um, physically, you can still give online in that way. And you know, we've got a wonderful thing we would like to do to bless the family of Mal. And if you would like to give a offering in remembrance of him, um, just a, you can note on your envelope, hey, this is to remember Mal and God bless him and his ministry for what he did here. We will, we will share those sentiments with the family, and I think that would be very thoughtful. So that's just something to think about, too, later as we're able to give. Um, let's see. Next Sunday will be the drum circle. Bring your drums. It'll be fun. <laughs> very good. As far as I know, we are good with what the announcements that I know that we're aware of. Um, if you will now, let's stand to your feet. Let's greet each other the unity way. You can stand up now. That's good. Thank you for listening. Perfect. Then we're going to go hug somebody's neck, shake somebody's hand. The Christ in me meets the Christ in you. And we work together for the glory of God. that we get to be in your house today God, to experience not only the love of our friends and our neighbors here but god also the, your beautiful divine love that you extend to each one of us lord i pray now that you would open our hearts and our minds and our ears as we eagerly await the message that Pastor Elizabeth has for us today. And we are so grateful for all that you do in our lives. And everyone said, 
Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all for being here today. It's a rainy day. And like Troy said, liquid sunshine depends on how you see it. But you know, I think the rain comes too to wash things away. Just washing away all the past, all the hurts, all the pains. Isn't that what baptism's all about? Baptism is going to that place and deciding to just let it all go. John was that great baptizer. He was the one that people were coming and he would take them to the waters, let them be baptized. Baptized, we, sometimes we just go through rituals and we don't even know what they're about, you know. But the sprinkling of water or going all the way under, the symbol is, is washing away those negative thoughts. Washing away those negative feelings. Washing away the past. And letting everything just let go. Just let go. Let go. And let God. I think a lot of us, we go through the rituals sometimes. And we forget about the power behind things. The true power of the divine that is within us. And I love the card that went out with the message. Did you see that? The title of the message is, what is it? Will we follow the crowd or the master? You can't see it for the other writing. <laughs> Enter through the narrow gate. Small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few there find it. Why do a few find it? Because I think we go through rituals and think that's that's it. You know, that's it. But it's an everyday thing of following, following that, not somebody on the outside, but that presence that is within. Just like the song we were singing, God speaks to me. That was beautiful. Thank you. God speaks to me. But it's not just to a minister, a priest, a pope, a religious leader of some kind. That divine speaks to each and every one of us every day. But do we hear it? Do we hear it? It's in that stillness. It's when that heart begins to speak. But we're so used to listening to the mind all the time. And that's where the narrow gate comes in. That narrow gate. Because I'm more and more watching what goes on within me and things come up for us and we react to things we have feelings we have emotions and I'm really getting in touch with how much the feelings and the emotional body speaks to us or directs our life more than other things then I began to recognize that how do I communicate with God? Yes, I can communicate in words when those words are coming from my heart. When it's really in that innermost place, I can speak out those words loudly. But so often words just have to, to be words. But when you speak, sometimes you're having an emotional feeling inside. You know, you're tense or you're angry or you're resentful. And guess what? That's the language that the universe picks up. Do you feel that? We hide so much behind. We hide so much of what we're feeling inside. And now those feelings are coming out, not just of me or just of you, but I've mentioned this before, the whole world is experiencing this. The whole world. So I want to follow that Christ. I want to be there in consciousness and emotion and feeling and all the time, you know, but it's like we're human and divine. How can we do that? But it's every day as we want that closer walk, that closer connection, that knowingness that wherever we are, the divine is with us. We have to keep it in consciousness. 
How close is God the second we think that God's with us? Any other time, we're separated from that divine. We're out there. We're somewhere else. We're off in the future. We're back in the past. And all that stuff doesn't go into that narrow space that we're asking to go to. That narrow space is a vibrational frequency. I think we've talked about many times before. It's the vibrational frequency of tuning in to the higher dimensions, tuning into those places. And Friday, I was so blessed to be with the family and with Mal, Wendy. Mal was there too. I guess that's why it came out of my mouth. But to look at that family and feel that place was filled with love. You were there with it. And what drew people there was how that family lived their life. And, you know, Mal was that little man that was 95 years old that was there coming in with his cup of coffee on Sunday morning, giving me a hug, and then I'd give him a hug. He loved hugs. But the number one thing he liked is just love. He was pure love. And then he would go up here and wanted to greet everybody in here on Sunday morning. But I found out a lot about Mal. And Mal had his doors open all the time to people. Is it okay? He's told us about AA. Yeah. He's been uh, 51 years without drinking. 51 years without drinking. But he was so grateful. He wanted to give back. So his house was open to people. And he and his wife, if you were hungry, just come in and eat. If you want to go in the backyard to swim with my children when they were young, come on in. Go swimming with the babies, whatever. You're welcome. Because he was there. They were there to reach out to others that hadn't found that peace yet. And then when they did, they would continue to be friends. So, so much love was there. One person teaching his children, the children's children, and all the people they meet. And it's like it only takes one life to change so many others. But sometimes we say, hey, Lord, forgive me, and I go on my way. But then all the resentments, everything of the past is still with us. This is a daily walk, a daily journey. Just like an alcohol, a, somebody that's uh, uh, addicted to alcohol gives up that way of life because they know there's something greater in them. Greater inside that strength, that power that's within us to help us rise above any addiction. And while I'm speaking, I'm wondering what am I going this way before, because this way anyway. It's because we are addicted. We are addicted to those negative emotions. We are addicted to that negative thinking. We are addicted to those negative feelings and all that stuff. We're addicted to it. It's time that I want to break that addiction. How about you? It's like, well, if I just say this little thing, let's, let me know how. I'm going to tell you how I feel. You know, it's not, a, I mean, it, what are we doing when we do that? We're hurting someone else and we're hurting ourselves on top of it. We're doing that to ourselves and others. How many has a, uh, a person in their family that has been an into an addiction of some kind, alcohol, drugs, stuff like that? Is it just about that one person? No, it's about the whole family. You stay up late at night wondering where they are, what's happening. Are they okay? Are they safe? Going into neighborhoods that you wouldn't normally go in, looking for somebody that you love. Well, that spirit is always with us, the spirit of the living God. They're wanting to comfort us, wanting to bring us out of those dark places, wanting to bring us to a higher way of being, wanting to plant our feet on solid ground, wanting us to know that all the things that we've been looking for, we already have. We already have it. The part is it. We're not connecting to that innermost part within us to recognize all that I ever need is in me. Everything. It's already been given to us. And that's the place this, in, this energy is taking humanity to right now. If we can wake up and see it. God supplies the needs of all the animals that are out. 
in the wild and the birds. And Jesus says, are you any less than these? Are you any less than these? Well, I don't believe that's going to happen for me. Well, that's why it doesn't happen for us. We don't believe. We don't know. We don't reach for that truth. Because the more we become still, the more we'll start moving into that higher way of being and thinking. This is a reality, folks. It really is. People think it's just a daydream. Well, how about going to heaven? You're waiting for so many were waiting to pass on to the sweet by and by. When I stand here, I don't remember Jesus talking about the sweet by and by or preparing yourself for that sweet by and by. It was for the here and now. He says, heaven is among you. Heaven is among you. The kingdom is within you. But I do believe when we get step out of this body that we're going to be in a world that is going to be wonderful, however that is, but it's consciousness. Our consciousness has always been, always will be, will never pass away, never pass away. But however we want to see it, that's the way it can be. But how, why can't we see a world of peace right here? Why can't we see a world at peace within our family, our families getting along, or our community getting along? or our business getting along, or our churches getting along. Wow. Why do most so many churches split? You did something I didn't like, usually. Somebody said something you didn't, you didn't like to hear. But I'm recognizing more and more and more Already listening divides so many people because I've experienced it over the past months where I say something and somebody else says, I think I said something else, or I think somebody said something and then find out that's not when we sit down and talk. That's not the way I said it because our minds are not right in the moment. Okay, thank you, God. That's what it is. When we learn to be right in the moment, right in the moment. Hearing that a third time, in the moment. What is the moment? It's the present, isn't it? The present. What is a present? A present is a gift. Don't you think of that as a present too? Do you know every present moment is a gift from God? It's a gift. What a gift it was to hold Mal's hand Friday a week ago and pray the prayer of protection with Mal. The gentleman that we were holding hands, I was holding hands with, later he said, did you see he was saying the prayer of protection with us? He knew that? Well, he was, I couldn't hear his voice, so my eyes were closed. But yes, we were right in the moment, and what a beautiful moment. And all the moments that we miss with each other, we take for granted. I know one Christmas, I knew my sister was going to get married the next year. And we were decorating the Christmas tree. I was about, well, I was 11 years old, I guess, then. And I said, you know, I hope this is the best Christmas we've had so far. And I love Christmas. They were always good for me. Because that was the one time I got some gifts. I got something. We, weren't, we didn't have the money to have stuff all the time. And I said, you know, because next year, some of us won't be here. Well, I meant my sister was going to be married. And she wouldn't be right there in our home with us. All of a sudden, I don't know why this is coming up, my sister turned around and slapped me so hard in the face. It shocked me, and I ran to the bedroom and started crying. But what I didn't recognize, but what she was hearing me say is, Mother will be dead by next year. 
that was the truth of it. They were both no longer in the house with me. But we misunderstand each other. I was saying it with love that I want us to be really close, but that came out. And so often we get slapped in the face by others because of what they think we've done or said. And that's that part that says that narrow, narrow gate to get into that place of coming into that perfection. And I know I heard someone say perfection isn't possible in, in, within a human body. Jesus came to that place of total peace, of total forgiveness, of total awareness. And he asked us to come and follow him. He said, all that I am, you are too. All that I am. Or is that just only words? He was spirit and flesh. We are spirit and flesh. He came to that place that he worked within that spiritual body of who he was from the beginning of creation. There's something deep, deep inside of me that tells me we can do that also. I believe it. I believe it. Whether I accomplish in this lifetime, a thousand lifetimes down the road, I will accomplish it. No matter how many times I fall down, I will get up. And I believe that about you too. I hold it for you. I don't care what we're addicted to within our own consciousness, within our own body. We can rise up above all things because all things are possible. And I think one of the ingredients that help us to go to that place, two came up, is love and gratitude. Thank you for mentioning gratitude. But I heard the songs being sung too was saying it's time for gratitude. Yes, things happen in our life. But we've been talking about the things that happen. They happen to bring us to that place of surrender and letting go and let the best of the best. You take a making wine. What does the wine press does, do? It presses out the goodness in the grape. Presses out the goodness, the juice of it. What does a piece of coal, how does it become a diamond? The pressure, the pressure it puts under that piece of coal to turn into a diamond. We're made of the elements of this earth too, folks. And when we're not becoming what we, we are destined to become, because we have a destiny, that destiny is to become like that which created us. That makes sense. And what is the element of that? It is love. We were created out of divine love, is what we're told. We'll understand that. I'm hearing better by and by. But those elements are working within us. Love. I remember Diddy spanking me one time and tells, told me it hurt him more than it hurt me. Oh, what's wrong with you? And I only do it because I love you. I don't think God punishes us. I think that our actions come back around is what gets us and bites us. It's our actions bring as you sow, so shall you reap. So those can come back around. But what happens, it pushes us. Here, I'll go back to an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic when I was just a baby. But it pushes you to the point where when you let go, you stand in gratitude. It's like being in prison, behind prison walls, not being able to function the way you want to function and do what you want to do because something else is ruling your life and squeezing you. And isn't this what's happening in this day and time? For the majority of people, life is so difficult for people Things seem to be falling apart. 
We're maybe not be in the war right now or anything of that nature, but things are happening all over this world. Mother Earth is shaking. She's like a puppy dog shaking all the stuff off of it, you know. She's shaking. Earthquakes. The waters are coming, and you will see more waters this, this year, too, because what's happening is that cleansing and that clearing. Mother Nature, her symbol of I'm going to clear myself, and the fires that have been raging, all these things that are happening are the earth, the elements being cleared up, being cleared out. And you think that the atmosphere can't be cleared? Mother Nature knows how to do that, too. She knows how to take care of you, and she knows how to take care of herself, whether human beings stay on this planet or not. But we're going through so much pressure. It's to push the goodness out of us. It's to bring out the love in us. It's to bring forth the oneness in us. Look what happens when catastrophes happen. People begin to gather together, don't they? Houses are burnt down or floods come. And what do we do just like Mal and his wife? We open our doors. We open our doors. We want to help each other. We want to make sure each other has food and clothes, and shelter. It breaks down the walls in our heart and in our mind. We begin to see people as people. 9-11, didn't you meet people and hug them on the street? Weren't you in the elevator and talked to people you would have never spoken to before? Those things let us drop down our walls. And help us to have that compassion, that love, and that gratitude for the things, the goodness that we've been blessed with. Things are destroyed and taken away. But thank you, God, I still have my life. I still have my life. It's usually where a lot of people go to. I would say the majority of people, you hurt, but then you're thankful that your family members are okay, that your neighbors are okay. Tornado went through Ardmore years back. Tony was in Texas, knew nothing about it. Trees everywhere, everywhere, things happening. My son had just been killed in an automobile accident the year before, and my other son had just left to go to the mall when that happened. And power lines were falling, and I was praying, God, look after everyone. Just don't let anybody be hurt. There were people that got up to go in the kitchen when a huge tree came in, exactly where they were sitting. There were things like that all over the place. I thought my son was exaggerating when he said a power pole fell in front of the car. Another tr a tree fell right at the back of the car, but the car wasn't stuck in there. It was raising up and down. He said he didn't know what to do except get out and run, he and his friend. And they ran in the darkness to get back to the house. I went, Tony and I went to see the car, and sure enough. But yet they were not harmed. They were not harmed. So many blessings. But why all those people that have gone on? It was their time to get people's attention, to touch hearts. So we can feel what it feels like to lose the main thing in our life. It's each other. It's each other. And we're not promised, just like Mal was here. He was here too, a couple of weeks ago. You weren't here. And I said, Mal, where's Wendy? Oh, she's not here. He said, uh-huh. But he said, uh, I said, how'd you get here? I came myself. You what? <laughs> I didn't expect that at 95 years old. But I don't know if he drove his car. He did drive his car. Okay. He drove his car, but we didn't realize he came here because he wanted to see us. He wanted to be with us. Maybe he didn't know that was the last time he was going to walk in this church. But his love brought him in here. To see each and every person here. That was, I think, a highlight of his week, wasn't it, Wendy? To come and see y'all. And then go to his other meetings and see his friends there. 
it's time that we begin to not take things for granted in each other. I mean, today may be the last day I see y'all in the physical form. We never know when we are with a friend or we're hushed, hurrying away from somebody or don't want to speak to them or trying to hang up or whatever, because then, you know, you have regrets. I know dad always kissed mother before he walked out the door. Always hugged her, gave her a kiss. A neighbor was there and she said, when he left, I was little, I remember her asking, the neighbor asking, she said, does he do that just for looks or is he always like that? She said, no, he always does. She said, why? She said, well, I guess it's because he loves me. And a few hours later, he came back in the house and he gave mom a hug and a kiss. And um, the lady asked, she said, why do you do that? He said, well, so often I've been with someone and I forgot to tell them I loved them. And he said, before I knew it, they were gone. I didn't get to tell them later. So to him, I guess he had lost so many people in his family that he always wanted to make sure he told people I love you and at least give them a handshake or a pat on the back and look them in the eye. Because when he did that, it was for real. It wasn't just words. You could feel it. You could feel it. So I want no regrets when I leave. And working on that part where Jesus said, Father, I forgive them for they know not what they do. Come to think of it, I've been working on that one. And when I look at the TV sometime, and I don't do that very often now, and see some of the things that's going on, I think, but how can they be doing that? And what came up for me is you can't judge a person by their actions. You can't judge a person by their actions. All are made in the image and likeness of the divine. They will come to that place if they choose. Sometimes, someplace, they will come to that. It would be like looking at a caterpillar, thinking you're just a lowly old dirty little worm eating up everything. You're no good for anything. When it just hasn't evolved into its place to be that beautiful, beautiful butterfly that you love to see out there on a spring or summer day flying around the bushes. We're all destined to be those beautiful beings of who we all are. So how can I judge you any longer? How can I criticize you any longer? I'm here to support you. You're here to support me. If I'm doing something that's incorrect, could you instruct me? I'm hearing the Bible verse. Instruct them in the way they should go. Instruct me in the way that would be a way that you would think would be the way I should go, and I can listen. But even so, we have to listen mostly to that voice, not mostly. We need to listen to that voice within. Because the more and more we work on listening to that voice, the more and more we will hear that voice. The more we hear that voice, the more we will be at peace. The more we're at peace, the more peace that we will resonate with others. Haven't you just wanting to be in somebody's presence because you can just feel the peace when you're around them? You can feel the joy when you're around them. You can feel the love that you're when you're around that person. This is what we are becoming if we choose. If we choose. But it's literally always a choice. And what we do. So now I'm going to look at things that I feel. And the actions that. That's an old addiction. That's an old addiction. I'm just in a habit of doing it. And began to take new steps. Towards following that divine presence. That is leading all of us. Because it's so easy to go the way of that wide path. And I recognize that part where it's spoken, render unto Caesar what's Caesar's and the things that are God's unto God. 
It's our life that has been given to us. Can we give it back in divine presence, allowing it blossom and become what it is, who it is, as it is? Let it show, like Jesus said, let that light shine. Not for bragging. I didn't see any bragging last Friday. I don't see bragging and strutting and a lot of people that you can just feel that. Well, when you feel the love, you don't feel that. You just don't feel that. It's just pure. The essence is just divine. But this is what we're being called to. Called to that higher ground, that higher vibrational frequency. And we will break through to that consciousness. That's what awakening is all about. Awakening is opening the eyes of our heart. I love that song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. I want to see you. And for years when I hear that song, I'm not looking out there thinking, I want to see you, God. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see God in you. I want to see it. And I do. I do. I do. I do. More and more when I become still, but when I am caught up in that outer world, caught up in anxiety, caught in up in all the things you have to do, I'm not right there where I see it all the time. But I know we can come to that place. And then as we come together, we will come because we want to come together, not because it's just a ritual that we do on Sunday or Wednesday or whatever. We come just as we are. And we come because we want to come to meet our family and meet our friends and to begin to see what good we can do together. Because divided we stand. No, together we stand. Divided we fall. That's why so many businesses are crumbling. So many churches are falling apart. Because we leave it up to one, two, or three people to do everything. And a few people can't do it all. It takes all of us. All of us giving of our talents. Giving of our love. Giving of our support. If we want to make something work. And so I admire each and every one of you. And I am so grateful to you. That you chose to be here today. Nobody twisted your arm. No one pushed you into he this place, but you came because you wanted to. The rain didn't keep you away. And what I used to hear all the time, love brought me here. Love brought me here. And that's what I want everyone that walks into this place to feel the love of the divine in you, in you. I want your friends to begin to come to spend time with you on Sunday morning, to spend time with us, to do things, to create things. And together, we will keep these doors open and we'll keep our lights shining. We will miss Mal, but I know he's here with us. And I recognize these chairs are not empty. They're not empty. They're filled today with all the... <laughs> All the greeters that have ever, ever, ever been here and in that other church. They're filled with the people that welcome people in year after year after year here at Unity. Not only that, I'm feeling Jack Bowen Sr. here because I keep in touch with his son and his, his wife. Oh, Jack in prayer. He's having some difficulties. But Jack had one of the largest churches Unity churches, I think we've ever had in Warren, Michigan. And one reason for that I'd recognize this week is because our, one of our friends that came here said, you know, I came when I moved to Winston, I wanted to find a Unity church because he went to Warren, Michigan. And he said, it really upset me when my minister got up and said, I'm an alcoholic. He said, I couldn't believe it. You know, that he'd ever been an alcoholic, not the way he presented himself, not the way he loved, not the way he created things. But that church was packed out. But one reason 
they had AA groups there every day with huge tables, 12 different tables or probably way more than 12. But the tables, you would go by the different um, steps in AA. And if you fell back, you'd go back to first table. But then Jack Bolin also created the mastermind, which relates to the 12 powers. I turned my life over to the mastermind. And the mastermind knows everything. And so we would, the mastermind program was something he did all the time. So maybe we could do things of that nature. Because when we come together and we share our heavy loads, knowing that we state it, but then we see something greater than ourselves picking up that burden and handling it. Things begin to change. Things change. I think we've gotten into the, the age of just going, 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 doing, doing, doing. And we've lost those times of coming together. So as family, let's begin to brainstorm things that we can do and how we can come together to share what's going on in our life for a few moments and then re realize there's always an answer. My God has an answer to every problem that I can solve. That's another salt I'm hearing. Everything can be solved. So just seeing things begin to shift and change. Week after next, we're going to be in, like uh, Troy was telling telling y'all, we'll be in Washington, D.C. at how many have already registered that we know of, Tony? Over 450,000 have already registered that will be there. And so there's going to be many, many, many more that's coming together from all over the world that they'll be singing and dancing and lifting up spirits and letting people know that cultures, we can all be together. I do believe it will take time for nations to come together and join but there are people all over that their hearts are already ready. And this is what the, ex the expression of this is. To come together and let people recognize. It doesn't matter our skin color or our nationality or what we believe or don't believe. All of us have the capacity to love each other and to love the divine in however way we see it. And I love each of you. I give thanks for you being here with me today. And I hope this has touched your heart in some way, but you have certainly touched my heart by being here. I really appreciate it. You will just close your eyes for a moment and I'll share with you a daily word in closing. May we all be living on in, on pur in purpose, dear God. You sent us here. May we do that. that you sent us here to get to, to bring love and light to this world. To give comfort to others, joy to others. Because we're walking a path that they are crossing that path with us. May we hold each and every one dear that we meet and say the words you'd have us say and do the things that we're divinely guided to do as we rejoice in our family of love. May we live our life on purpose, drawing us closer and closer to, to the divine. It's only natural to wonder what our purpose on earth is, what our lives should be about. We ponder so often what, we'll, what, I, what we feel and we are driven to accomplish what we think we're doing to make a mark in the world. But in finding and following our life's purpose, that gives our life meaning for us. Those pursuits that bring joy and happiness to our heart and, sp and sparks excitement will lead us in the direction of our own passion and the combination we can make and the, contribu the contribute to the world 
with what all we have to add to it. As we pursued our purpose, we are filled with a zeal. We're bursting with creative energy and driven to push ourselves to new heights of expression and accomplishment. God is with us at every point of our journey. May we recognize that. May we recognize God is with us through our work and the works of our hands, the words of our mouth, the love in our heart. May we celebrate always the glory of God. May we enter by that narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is that gate that leads us to love, joy, peace, happiness, and the truth of all we are. Thank you, God. Thank you for this day of togetherness. Thank you for this day that I feel the love of God and the love of each one here. Peace. Peace I leave with you, Jesus said. Not the peace of this world. But I give to you a peace that goes beyond all understanding. So when you're in those places of hardship, turn within and recognize that peace that is already within you. That peace that will take you to the place you don't have to understand what just happened. You don't have to understand why the bumps and the, the roads are turning this way or that way. You don't have to understand why you feel crucified but only know there, there is a peace and a love that can take you above all those circumstances, above all those emotional issues to bring you into that place that you will truly know in the midst of everything. All is well. And so it is. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. As Troy was saying, if you would like to give a donation to the church in memory of Mal, we would just put it on your check or in one of the little envelopes we have, and we'll let the family know that you've you've honored him in that way. But if this and if this has blessed you in any way today, and you would like to give a love offering. To continue to support this church and the doors being open, we would be grateful. And let us bless it together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Beautiful, beautiful. Sweet hour of prayer. Do you know every day you're praying all day long? Do you recognize that? Every thought is a prayer. Is that ran through my mind when I was sitting there? It's like when I behold something, what kind of prayer am I giving out? Am I giving a blessing or not? Am I seeing the good in everything? Because if I'm seeing something and I'm seeing the something dark and and stagnant in somebody's life but can i look at someone or something that i would normally think is wrong and say i give thanks for the good that's there i think give thanks for the blessings that are showing up in this situation i don't understand a lot of things but can i come to that place to see the good that's my prayer not to change someone, but to see the change happening in them as they choose. Let us think of those things. Whatsoever's good, whatsoever's kind, whatsoever's pure. Let's think of things of that nature and see how we blossom and grow. Just try it for a day. Or an hour. Or a few minutes. Okay. I give thanks for this visit of the bounty of God. I send it forth with love and joy to do its perfect work. And thank you, God, 
Thank you, God, for all the gifts you give us each and every day and each and every moment. I am so grateful we have the opportunity to give in return. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Go ahead. If you'd like to come together for our closing peace song and the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. All is well, folks. Go create a wonderful day.